what is oecd what is pillar 2 taxation what is global minimum tax rules what is this top up tax what is this dta dtl what's all this i'm not telling you something which is in greek arab or latin this is something which is there in your accounting standard 22 by way of a recent amendment applicable for january 2026 attempt of ca intermediate and onwards how dare that i can tell this without proof this is not told by me this is told by rtp which is issued by icai for january 2026 attempt and this amendment has been given if in case you came across this reading this scope paragraph presentation disclosure para 32a 32b 32c 32d what is all this don't worry in this video we're going to break this completely down and understand it with the help of a beautiful example this is something very very beautiful which has been recently added into our ca intermediate syllabus we should have to know before you go for your january 2026 examination and onwards to begin with the concept of oecd pillar 2 taxation global minimum tax rules all this comes because lot of entities which are multinational companies shift their subsidiaries or place of business into tax havens let's make it much more simple if i am operating in india where a corporate tax rate is 40% every 100 rupees i earn i have to pay 40 rupees of tax which i am not very happy paying so what would i do i open a subsidiary in a tax haven maybe like mauritius maybe like cayman islands or maybe in a country which is very well developed but charges zero tax something like ua dubai a bb come to dubai you have to do business here 0% corporate tax but right now they made it 9% but to see couple of years ago 2 3 years ago the corporate tax in dubai or in uae as a whole was zero what would i do instead of earning 100 rupees in india and paying 40 rupees as tax i will open a new company in uae and lot of my sales i will show it in my subsidiary company which is there in uae so there if i show 100 rupees income instead of showing in my indian company i don't have to pay 40 rupees tax i would have to pay only 9 rupees i'll save 31 i am not giving you a tip on how to save tax i am explaining the concept of how multinational companies started creating subsidiaries in tax havens where there is very less tax in order to save tax but this is not something that lasted really long so there is an international body by name organization for economic and cooperation and development like organization for economic cooperation and development this is lot of countries in it you can see how many flags are there which of those companies do you know you can try and spot them so all of these countries together have formed one global body called as oecd which ensures that no country is cheated by its multinational companies by way of evading tax and shifting it to this tax seven countries how are they making this happen very simple they bought in something called as global minimum alternate tax as if your existing mat is not sufficient they bought in something called as gmat global mat and this global mat is applicable at 15% if the effective tax rate in that country is less than 15% so let's say i am tcs an indian company in india the tax rate applicable is 40% so i opened one subsidiary in dubai which is in uae where the tax rate applicable is 9% i would want to show lot of my revenue what i'll earn in my indian company in my subsidiary which is in dubai so that i'll end up paying lesser amount of tax if this is being done indian government loses on revenue so oecd tells that if in any country the effective tax rate is lesser than 50% then that company would have to pay top up tax to bring it up to 15% i know this is what's told in rtp but this doesn't make much sense for us to understand without an example so let's do it our way like how we do in the class every time this is complete theory of the entire rtp concept whatever is there i have made into colorful beautiful chart i'll share this pdf to you the link to the telegram channel in which this pdf is shared is pinned in the comments please go to that pinned comment and you will find this in the telegram channel if in case you have any other video suggestions that you would want me to do on in the coming days please do let me know in the comments uh, of this specific video and i'll definitely come and then do another video on that topic for now let's take an example to decode this oecd and pillar 2 taxation here we have a beautiful example tata consultancy services an indian company has set up its subsidiary in uae dubai and 
in dubai they have made profit of 1000 crores we don't know whether this profit was actually made in indian entity or global business or actually in the dubai based business let's say they made 1000 crores profit in the subsidiary company which is created in dubai by the way the company is a new company is a separate company created subsidiary not the same company's branch holding company is in india subsidiary company is in dubai and they have 1000 crores profit there the tax rate in dubai applicable is 9% if you apply 9% of 1000 crores it comes to 90 crores so how much is the tax paid in dubai 90 crores now will oecd this top up tax this two pillar taxation will all this come it's all dependent upon the effective tax rate what is the effective tax rate in dubai or uae 9% what is the effective tax rate in dubai or uae 9% which is less than the oecd prescribed minimum rate of 15% so oecd has prescribed the minimum rate of tax in a country to be 15 because uae is charging lesser than 15 this concept of top up tax will come into picture let me help you understand how does this work let's see this what and how much is top up tax in dubai the effective rate is 9% on 1000 crores the dubai subsidiary has paid to dubai government i want to say the uae subsidiary has paid to uae government 90 crores actual rate that they should have paid as per the oecd limits minimum 15% if i apply 15% on 1000 crores it comes to 150 crores so 150 crores is the minimum amount that should have been charged by the uae government but uae government has charged our subsidiary of tcs which is there in uae only 90 crores the difference of 60 crores which is tempting that company tcs to open a subsidiary in uae and then pay this is called as top up tax this is called as top up tax so minimum uae should have charged 15 but uae has charged only 9 inviting people like abibi come to dubai start business in dubai they are welcoming and to save tax people have gone there and done business oec details balance 60 crores you pay now who should pay to whom to pay is the next question but i hope you understood till here now who collects this top up tax now dubai which is welcoming the people has to ensure that it plays the game fair and lets tcs do business in india and not come to dubai to do that they should increase their tax rate to 15 but anyways they have told 9% now they can correct their mistake uae uae government if they correct their mistake by in, by increasing their tax rate by introducing one new tax called as qualified domestic minimum top up tax qdmtt <laughs> if uae government amends their law and introduces this qdmtt then the uae government will collect this tax of 60 crores from tcs uae the subsidiary which is there in united arab emirates will pay 60 crores of top up tax to the uae government this is because the uae government which had charged only 9% tax has now introduced qualified domestic minimum top up tax what if uae government doesn't bring this qualified domestic minimum top up tax and keeps their tax rate at 9% only then indian government can collect 60 crores from whom not from the subsidiary but from the holding company which is there in india indian government will ask for 60 crores this is the concept of top up tax just to make you understand again there are a lot of countries across the globe which charge very low tax rate or almost zero tax rate which will tempt lot of indian companies to open a subsidiary there and show the revenue there book the profit there and pay less tax this way indian government is losing out on revenue this is not just happening for india but several countries all of them together have formed an entity called as oecd which says that minimum every country should charge 15% tax rate if they charge less than 15 up to 15 differential amount will be called as top up tax that i am don't i am not saying that you should pay to me you collect it whichever country is collecting lower tax let them collect it if they don't collect then i will collect but i can't ask uae subsidiary to pay me tax what jurisdiction do i have so i'll collect it from the indian holding company top up tax because uae government has not charged the top up tax by way of qualified domestic minimum top up tax going further 
have given an inner also. OECD never collects tax. OECD is a body which is making peace. OECD is like me. Two of you are fighting. I don't want money. I will come to you and then tell who should give money to whom. I don't want your money. OECD is not government. OECD doesn't collect tax. OECD just tells who should collect how much tax. Let's go to the next part. Now, what is the accounting treatment of this top-up tax as per accounting standard 22? This is almost like the climax of this entire concept. Now, scenario 1. UAE government, United Arab Emirates, I told you, you know, they are charging only 9% but OECD limit is 15. They have an option to introduce qualified domestic minimum top-up tax. If this has been introduced, then the Dubai subsidiary is there, you no? Know? In Dubai, the TCS subsidiary, that subsidiary will pay. First, it's an expense debit top-up tax expense account debit. How much? That differential amount of 60 crores. And it is not yet paid. It's a liability. I'll credit it to top of tax payable 60 crore. And later when it is paid, journal entry will be top of tax payable account debit 60 crore to bank account. I am not keeping two currencies in this example. I'm keeping it easier for you to understand by keeping everything in rupees. If they pay in dirhams, then this entry will be made in dirhams. I don't have to translate into Indian rupees because these entries are happening in the books of TCS Limited Dubai. This is in the books of subsidiary, not Indian holding. And because UAE government has introduced QDMTT, top-up tax is collected by Dubai only, 15% tax is collected by Dubai, like UAE, I don't have to write any journal entry in the Indian company. No entry in the Indian holding. Why? QDMTT is implemented in UAE, top-up tax is paid by TCS Limited UAE to the UAE government. So, Indian government does not have any jurisdiction or that Indian holding company, TCS India, does not have any obligation to pay to Indian government. This is when QDMTT, Qualified Domestic Minimum Top-Up Tax, is introduced by UAE. Let's do scenario 2. What if Qualified Domestic Minimum Top-Up Tax is not introduced by UAE government? Then, Indian government has the power to collect that 60 crores. From whom? Not from the subsidiary which is there in UAE, but from the TCS Limited India, which is there in India. So, the Dubai entity, UAE subsidiary, will write no entry. Why? QDMTT is not implemented by UAE. So, the top of tax is not payable by TCS Limited UAE to UAE government. Indian government has the power. When Indian government collects, Indian government collects it from TCS Limited India. What is the entry? Same. Top up tax account debit to top up tax payable. Expense debit, liability credit. Same 60 crores. And when it is collected, or when, you say when the company pays it, entry is top up tax payable account debit to bank account. This is the payment entry. I hope you understood. I have tried my best, and all that theory statement, whatever was given, I have cooked it into easily understandable journal entries and then put it across. This is significant because it's been a new adjustment that's been introduced, new amendment that's been introduced in the RTP. There is good chance of a question on this coming in your MCQ, case scenario question or a proper four marker. Let me clarify, I do no expectation about this will pakka come in the exam. Nobody can do, neither can I nor can anybody else. I am just covering it up because it is come in your RTP. If this question on this topic does not come in the exam, do not come back and curse me in the comments saying that, sir, you made me watch this 15 minutes video. It did not come in the exam. Please do not hold me responsible. And if it comes in the exam, you don't have to come back and thank me. No, I don't need your thank you. You do well, you pass. However, do share it across to all your friends who are doing exam, who are writing examination in January 26 because, not because it will come in the exam, but because you should know. Next, how to show top-up tax in financial statements? Top-up tax should be shown in your financial statement as a separate line item. If you remember statement of profit or loss, we will write income, revenue from operation, other income, total income, all the expenses, consumption of raw material, purchase of stock and trade, changes in inventory, employee benefit expenses, depreciation, amortization expenses, finance charges, other expenses, total expense, income minus expense, profit before tax. From that you deduct, no? Current tax, deferred tax, along with that right top of tax. It is a new item to be included in your statement of profit or loss. Now, what I would want you to know is, how to present this in financial statements. This is not temporary change. This top-up tax is not timing difference. So, 
this has no implication on deferred tax. You don't have to compute deferred tax for top up tax. You don't have to disclose this separate. You don't have to disclose deferred tax for this separately. Just have to disclose this uh, tax item separately in your statement of profit or loss. This top up tax is considered as a part of your current tax and it will be disclosed in your statement of profit or loss as a separate line item. There is no timing difference, so no deferred tax. It has been clarified specifically by the new paragraphs that has been introduced. If in case you are curious to know more about this OECD basic thing, not definitely for January 26 students, for other students, what is QRD, MTT, what is IIR, what is UTPR, STTR, GLOB, I have given everything here. But this beyond the books concept is not there in your RTP, not required for exam, but I have given something more. And I have given one beautiful interpretation of mine, what I feel about this concept also here, which you can definitely read when you get the RTP. Uh, let's now see what is that statutory statement given in the material. This is the boring part. OECD has introduced global minimum tax rate at 15% for large multinational companies which are operating in another country by way of a subsidiary which is a tax event where the effective tax rate is less than 15%. To bring it up to 15%, top-up tax will be calculated and top-up tax can be computed and then collected from the country which has jurisdiction. If the country which has jurisdiction does not collect it, then the other country can collect. Now, pillar 2 tax is what we call this as. This is not arising because of timing difference and uh, this is because the jurisdiction country has charged lower tax rate. This is because the minimum flow rates mentioned by the OECD is 15%. This is to ensure that the company does not fall short immediately and the shortfall does not reverse. So, no DTA, no DTL. These are the clauses which has been newly introduced in your accounting standard 22. Para 32A says that disclosure, disclose that no deferred tax will come because of pillar 2 taxes. No concept of this. And para 32B says that this pillar 2 tax should be included in your current tax in statement of profit or loss. Para 32C talks about lot of disclosure requirements with regard to qualitative information. This law is enacted but it is not yet effective. This is not there in your study material anyways. You can ignore this. 32D talks about quantitative information like what is the impact, what is the jurisdiction, how much is the amount affected and all of this. This is again disclosure requirement, you can relax with this also. So, how is this applicable and whom is this applicable to? Is this applicable to all the entities? See, certain thing, everything is applicable to large entities. But for MSMEs, it is only no DTA, DTL, para 2A applicable, do not have to do that. And top up tax as a separate line item applicable, but disclosure of that para 32C, 32D. Uh, quantitative disclosures, qualitative disclosures that is applicable only for large entity. It is not applicable for MSME. So, this is what I want you to know and this is the entire concept of OECD. I hope it was helpful. Last but a very important point. This is not the only amendment in your Jan 26 RTP which is given. There is one more amendment that is given before this that is change in the applicability, change in the classification of non-corporate entities which is regulated by ICI. Previously, we used to add something called as level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4. Now, it has been changed. It is only two large entities and MSMEs. I hope you have done that. That is not a new amendment that was applicable for September 25 attempt also. However, there is another video uploaded on the same in the same YouTube channel. I will put the iCard for that here. You can click on the iCard or you can see in the description or you can ask in the comment. You can watch that also if you have not done. I hope your preparations have done, have gone well so far. I hope it will go really well even beyond this point. Wishing you all a great success in the upcoming examination because all I can do is pray for you. Can't give you shits in the exam. See you all on the other side. Till then, stay in the game.